Welcome back everybody, it is Mr. Boylan here for some more amazing chemistry times. We are going to, in this video, define pH and pOH and use the hydronium or hydroxide ion concentrations to calculate the pH or pOH of a solution. Breaking it down as always, first thing we're gonna do is define pH and pOH. What are those things? Maybe you have heard of them, maybe you have not, but first thing we're gonna do, two, we are going to explain and use the pH and pOH scales, and then three, we are going to calculate pH or pOH given either hydronium ion concentration or hydroxide ion concentration. Okay, so as you think about that last video where we were talking about the concentrations of hydronium ions or hydroxide ions, uh, hopefully you recognize that it could be a little bit cumbersome to say, oh, this solution is acidic because it has a concentration of hydronium ions at one time, 10 to the negative two. Really cumbersome because those numbers are often very, very small. So to make your life easier, we're gonna use logarithms. Yes! Whoever said you'd never use math didn't know what they were talking about. Never took chemistry. Okay, so first let's recall what the heck a logarithm is. I have no idea. Uh, First of all, you may get logarithms that look like this and you would read this log base 2 would you read that actually log base 2 of 8 so let's take a look at a an example to just refresh our memories if we have forgotten how to read logarithms this is uh, log base 2 of 8 equals I don't know what the heck is a logarithm and so the answer to this is 3 and if you're wondering how three, remember essentially what we're asking ourselves is what exponent do we need to raise two, the number two, two, to get eight. And in this case, we need to raise it to the power of three. Now, lucky for us uh, in chemistry, we are simply gonna stick to log base 10 or common logs. And many times this 10 is not included. It's understood when there is no number written there that we're talking base 10. So if I gave you log base 10 of a million and you wanted to know what that answer was, you're thinking to yourself, what number do I have to raise 10 to to get to a million? If you came up with the answer six, you would be correct. Again, think about 10 to the sixth will give me one Million. Okay, now here's some also really, really exciting things uh, when it comes to understanding logarithms and how they apply to chemistry. You can put the letter P in front of anything uh, and it means the negative common logarithm of that, so negative log base 10 of that thing. So if I wanted to know P cabin, essentially I need to take the negative log of cabin. <laughs> We are typically gonna see the letter P in front of things like H and OH. And basically, no pun intended, what that means is that we want to, to take the negative log of the hydrogen or hydronium ion concentrations if we're talking pH or, ah, or if we're talking pOH, we're talking the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Another common P scale that you're gonna see here in chemistry is the pKa. And again, it's just talking about taking the negative log of those Ka values that we came up with when we're talking about strong or weak acids. As with the pH or pOH scale, or with any P scale, it's really just about making very small numbers more convenient to work with. And whoever came up with the idea that it's more convenient obviously is someone who like did math all of the time. Because I know a lot of people think logarithms make things more difficult, but with enough practice, you will see the power, no pun intended, you will see the power of logarithms. Gosh, I'm so funny on the weekends. <gasps> Okay, uh, so when we talk about the pH scale, we're talking about pH, uh, it stands for the French words pouvoir hydrogène, meaning hydrogen power. Again, we're talking about the powers or the exponents. Specifically, when we're talking about pH scale, we're talking about um, the negative of the common logarithm of the hydrogen or hydronium ion concentrations. So, if we had pure water, which has a hydronium ion concentration of one times 10 to the negative seven, if you take the negative log of that concentration, again, we want to know what power do we have to raise 10 to to get one times 10 to the negative seven? The answer is seven, because remember, we're taking the negative log of this number. Again, the question is, what number, what 
power do I have to raise 10 to to get one times 10 to the negative seven? And I have to raise it to negative seven. But because we're taking the negative log, it is seven. It might be easier to look at this in standard notation, but it's the same thing. Taking the log of 0 0.0000001, which is one times 10 to the negative seven, what exponent do I have to raise 10 to to get this number? Again, that answer is seven. Well, it's really negative seven, but I'm taking the negative log. So 10 to the negative seven equals 0 0.0000001. And when we're talking about pure water, which has a, which has a hydronium ion concentration of one times 10 to the negative seven, we say pH is seven. And that is a lot easier than saying the hydronium ion concentration of water is one times 10 to the negative seven molar. If we just say pH is seven, we know in our brains, because we're all mathematical geniuses, that that means, what does that mean? The hydronium ion concentration of water is one times 10 to the negative seven. Whew. Again, if you just focus on these exponents, and think about how they correspond to the pH value. Taking the negative log of 10 to the negative zero is zero. Taking the negative log of 10 to the negative one is one. 10 to the negative two is two. 10 to the negative three is three. So on and so forth. Okay, and the only thing I wanna say watch out for is recognize that many times our hydronium ion concentrations are 10 to a negative number. Just be cautious about your exponent in terms of whether that has increased or decreased your hydronium ion concentration it can be confusing because you're working in negative numbers. Okay, and that brings us to the pOH scale, which is very similar to the pH scale, uh, except that it is defined as the negative of the common logarithm of the hydroxide ion concentrations. And you've got the negative log of the common and again, you've got the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7. Your answer is 7. In other words, what number do you want to raise 10 to to get 1 times 10 to the negative 7? And remember, if you take the negative log, you end up with positive number 7. Again, without standard notation, you get the same answer. What number do I have to raise 10 to to get 0 0.0001? In this case, the answer is 10. So if the hydroxide concentration was 1 times 10 to the pH would be also 10. Once again, just be cautious. Remember that we're dealing with negative exponents in terms of what that means of increasing hydroxide ion concentration. Now, for you geniuses out there, we can get some amazing relationships that exist between pH, pOH, hydrogen ion concentration, hydronium ion concentration, hydroxide ion concentration. And again, this is understood because our KW value has to be constant at 25 degrees Celsius. And if you're really familiar and understand logarithms, this makes a lot of sense. And even if you don't really understand what's going on with the logarithms yet, just recognize that whatever the value of my pH is, the pOH is simply gonna be the difference between 14 and that pH value because KW has to stay constant. And so generally speaking, in a neutral solution, hydronium ion and hydroxide ion concentrations will be the same. pH will be seven, pOH will be seven. In acidic conditions, hydronium ion concentrations will be greater than hydroxide ion concentrations, pH will be less than seven, pOH will be greater than seven. And then lastly, as you look at your basic solution, there'll be greater hydroxide ion concentration, pH will be greater than seven, pOH will be less than seven. And then the last little thing to throw in here to make your life even more exciting is there's a new rule when it comes to significant figures with logarithms. And so the extra rule here is when considering significant figures with logarithms, there are as many digits after the decimal point as there are significant figures in the original number. So as you look at your notes and as you look at the screen here, if I were to take the common log of one times 10 to negative three, recognize that I have a total of two sig figs here, so my answer would have two digits after the decimal. Similarly, if I was taking the, uh, the common log of 1.00 times 10 to negative three, because I have three total sig figs here, I need three digits after my decimal in what would essentially be my pH or pOH. And that brings us to a close for pH and pOH calculations. Be sure to check out some of those guided practice videos, but don't have too much fun.